Now we're on step two, where we're going to take our implementation of FAC and untyped plate and rearrange it so that we have literally this pattern right here inside the code. And we don't have that pattern right now, but we want literally this pattern because we want to allow that on the right-hand side of our encoding. We don't have literally that right now. We have something close, but it has this extra FAC X argument, and where we want a recursive call to FAC, we have this self-application. We also uh, have a lambda with two arguments here, and that's a problem if we're aiming for curly, because curly only has single argument functions. So let's take care of that problem. We know how to deal with it by just currying FAC X. So we change the program this way. FAC X now takes FAC X, takes itself first, then it returns a lambda where it gets the, the argument n. Um, and then we, where we used to call FAC X with two arguments, now we, we curry those arguments. This is moving us in the right direction, it turns out, because now we have the lambda n that we want. Uh, before we make further changes, though, in the right direction, let's simplify this code a little bit. Because we have a, a, com a pattern here that can be simplified. We've got a lambda n, um, so it's a function that takes an n, and what it does is pass that n to some other function that takes an n. So we don't really need this lambda wrapper. We can just let f, we can just keep the let part, and then instead of adding a wrapper lambda n, where the n just gets passed to f applied to f, we can just return f applied to f and let that be, be the result function we want. So if we do that simplification, we're getting rid of this lambda n, then we get here, Right, so the n has gone away and it only shows up at the last minute. We return the self-application and this is where the n finally gets applied. Meanwhile, we have a lambda n here that's almost exactly what we want. Um, we've got uh, lambda n, we've got if 0 n. The only problem is that this says fact x applied to fact x instead of the word fact that we want. And if we just want it to say fact here, then we can just bind fact x applied to fact x um, to the word fact uh, and put that outside of the lambda and now we have exactly the term that we'll, we were trying to isolate. So this looks good. It looks like we've achieved our goal of transforming our factorial implementation to isolate this part. But there's a little problem here. We've actually created an infinite loop. The problem is that it used to be um, that we would only do the self-application in the then branch of the if. Uh, but now we're doing it always before the function is even called. And you know, if you work through the reduction, it turns out that this is not work. Changing the order of evaluation here introduces an infinite loop. So to solve this problem, we need to make sure that we only do this self-application when we get this far. And we can do that by delaying the self-application up here. That is, we do uh, the reverse of the transformation we did before. We add a lambda x and then just pass that x along to fact x applied to fact x. That way we only do the self-application when we end up calling the, the local function fact here. So now we have uh, isolated the piece that we want right here. We have all of this stuff in red that's sitting around it. That's the part that we want to move away into some other place. Right? So we, we've isolated it, but we still have a lot uh, of wrapper around it. What we would like to do is lift this red part out into a separate function so that it's out of our way. The problem is we can't do that because that red part includes the binding for fact that we're referring to right here. So we can't just uh, extract this piece out of it. We would have a free variable. What we can do, though, is, uh, is add a layer of indirection again with lambdas. So here I'm effectively uh, I'm adding a lambda around this. And all the part in blue now is something that we can lift out. But it means the same thing as before because we apply the part in blue with this purple application to just pass fact back in. So this looks like we just made it more complicated, but what we did now is that we have the blue and purple and the part that we want as something that we can actually lift out of the red term. And now this red term actually doesn't have anything to do with factorial, even though the names are still fact x and fact. Um, none of these names are used in the body here, and it doesn't refer to anything on the outside. So we can make those names more generic. Let's call them fx and f instead for some arbitrary function. And now we can take that red part and just pull it out into a separate function that accepts the blue part as an argument um, and then uses it just the same way it did before, passing in that f uh, to be factorial. So at this point, we have isolated exactly the part that we want. Um, we have just a little bit of extra wrapper around it, just the make, rec, and lambda. Now that we 
I figured out make rec and set it on the side, we can forget about it. And if we wanted to write the factorial function and we've got make rec, we could just write it like this. And we could write other functions, like the Fibonacci function. Uh, the general pattern is you say let the function you want, then you have to say make rec, then you have to say lambda, and you have to repeat the name that you want. But then you get to write the Fibonacci function as you usually would. Uh, lambda n, if n is 0 or 1, then return 1, call Fibonacci. Or if we wanted to sum uh, all of the numbers in the list, if we have lists in our language, uh, then here's the recursive sum function. Again, the core part is exactly the way we wanted to write it. We just have to write this boilerplate around it. Uh, crucially, though, the boilerplate doesn't use let rec at all, and it doesn't use define at all. Uh, it just relies on some make rec being defined.